recording going on here. Okay. Well, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Erin, and I am the Student Services Librarian at Grace Christian University. This is a recorded workshop on uh, paper structure preparation, specifically in the APA format. So, all right. So, as far as um, writing a paper for a class, a research paper, um, where do you start? So what I like to do is just figure out what my topic is going to be. Um, I review the syllabus and the assignment um, to figure out what it is that the professor wants from me and then figure out what I want to write about. And then the next thing that I kind of ask myself is what do you already know about it? Um, and I just kind of write down my ideas, what I think I know, um, what I'm pretty sure about, um, questions that I have about my topic, and then I start to research. Um, what do the experts have to say about it? And sometimes that research is called a literature review, which just means, you know, reading over what everybody, what a lot of people have already written about your topic. And then um, after that, um, I come up with the, the thesis statement or the research question. And that basically just says, this is my theory and here are the main points that I'm gonna cover to attempt to prove my theory is true. And just as an example, um, you could say, women in biblical times were both submissive and independent. They had defined gender roles, but could also exert a certain amount of authority. Um, so that's one way to approach a, a thesis statement. Another thing that you can do is ask a research question. So this is the question that I hope to answer. And then here are the sub questions or answers that pertain to it. So another thing that I could do is what were the roles women in biblical times were expected to play? Did they ever branch out from those roles? And what were the roles men played in either hindering or assisting them? So those are two ways um, that you can kind of approach your topic on a paper. And next comes the research and the literature review. Um, so again, you just kind of go over your topic. My topic is loosely women in the Bible. And then what do I already know about this? Um, some examples are Mary, Mary Magdalene, Ruth, Esther, and Hannah. And I just kind of write down what I know about them already. And then what information am I missing? And that's what you want to look for, especially in the databases um, and in your research. So for your research, um, you wonder wh where you should look. Is it biblical? Um, if it is, then uh, I would check the ATLA theological database first and then branch out into other databases if I have to. Um, is it psychology or secular in nature? And then I would do ProQuest first and then find ATLA articles to support those if I can to bring in that biblical worldview. And then if you're looking for something that's educational, or pedagogical in nature, you would choose ERIC, which is the educational resource um, database that we have at the library. So what I like to do when I research is find more information than I need at first and then weed it down. So um, I start by asking like broad questions or doing broad searches and just saving lots of articles that seem like they might be what I'm looking for. Um, then you answer your question, you explain the evidence, and you bring it into several main points. And in your research, if there are more questions that come up, um, well, do they need to be answered? And if the answer to that is yes, then you do a little bit more research. And if the answer is no, they don't need to be answered, they're not like pertinent to what you're studying or what you're writing about, then you just can move right on. So, um, the actual structure of your paper is going to look something like this. Um, you would start with an introduction, which works out from a wider concept to your narrow, um, narrower concept, drawing your reader into the topic, getting their interest, and then finishing with the statement that you intend to prove or the question that you want to answer. And so your introduction, like um, the way that you picture it in your mind, would look like this, uh, kind of like this. Um, geometrical shape here, you want to start with something wider and then work down into your thesis statement. And then um, after that, you would use the main points. 
So after you've written your thesis statement and you have some main points to discuss, in this case, we're still using the example of women in the Bible. Um, so these are my main points, basically. Um, they were submissive in some ways, independent in a lot of other ways and then what the roles of, of men were. So I would make each of these different paragraphs um, or even multiple paragraphs, depending on how much information you have for each of your points. Um, sometimes there's not three main points, sometimes there's more points or less points, but um, just make sure that you have enough research to back up however many points that you have. And then um, make sure that you're quoting your um, sources if they are, if you take it word for word, you have to quote it. And if you take the information, but don't use their words, you can paraphrase, but you always need a citation in the text to make sure that you're giving credit for the person whose ideas you're using. And then after you answer each of those main points, you would write your conclusion. So you work from the narrower thesis statement, and then you work out um, kind of guiding your view, your reader to a sense of understanding of your topic, um, giving the answer to your research question, and then firming up your main points. So as an example, um, this is what the conclusion would look like sort of in your mind again. Um, so you say, this is the answer to my question, how my thesis statement was proved or disproved. These are the things, um, the findings of my research, and this is how it makes sense in the grander scheme of things. So you kind of work from that thesis statement out to, and um, applying it um, to the real world or to your circumstances or something, um, moving it out into a broader sense. And then as far as writing an APA goes, there are two main um, sources or, or helpers that you can use to, to help you with your APA citation styles and, and uh, manuscript style. And that is the, um, sixth edition publication manual written by the American Psychological Association, which is basically everything that has anything to do with APA um, and all of the rules and guidelines and um, how to do citations and how to do the manuscript and basically everything you wanna know about writing an APA is gonna be found in this. I just finished my master's degree and I had to use APA and this was like my best friend when I was writing. So if it's worth it to you to purchase this on Amazon or whatever, I highly recommend it. It's been a big help to me. And then this is the one that um, I think a lot of you purchased for your classes. Um, it's a pocket style manual by Diana Hacker. And this has APA and MLA in Chicago to Arabian. This basically has pretty much everything you could wanna know about citation styles, um, but all of them, not just APA. So if you know that you might be writing in a different citation style for a class, um, if you're an on-campus student, for instance, and you're gonna be taking several kinds of classes with different citation styles, then I would um, opt for the Diana Hacker because there's all of the citation styles are listed in this um, pocket style manual. And then um, structuring your APA paper, Microsoft makes it easy by, um, they have a template that you can download that shows you basically how to um, write an APA style report. And then there's also one that's included in the um, orientation materials that you get that was kind of simplified by our online um, education staff to show you what an APA paper would look like for our courses. Oh, and then to get this in the Microsoft program, you just search for an online template if it's not already in your Word program. You search APA and it'll pop right up. Okay, um, so one thing that you need in an APA paper is a title and reference pages. So what you would need to do um, is make sure that everything's in a size 12 times New Roman font. The running head right here goes on every page. And then um, the page numbers are up here in the right hand corner. And then, um, just using the template can make it easier for you if you're um, not sure how to go about doing all of this in Microsoft Word because it is a lot of details and the template just makes it easy. And then the references page is the same way. You can see the running head stays on every page and the page number changes automatically for you. And then you would put references in the middle, center space, and then 
um, double space, you do the hanging indent right here to um, show that it's a bibliographic entry. So on the title page, you need the running head and you do keep those letters in there. It does say running head on the very first page and it will stay there and that's the way it needs to be. And then this needs to be in all capital letters. The title um, goes down here, your name, and then institution affiliations. Oh, sorry about that, I didn't change that. It should be Grace Christian University now. Um, so that would go here under institutional affiliations. And then the page number is up here, but the, pen, the template will do that for you if you um, do the template. Okay, and then your references page, this is just closer up. Um, you can see how the running head is, is brought over. The page number changes according to the number of pages you have. And then um, with your references, you can um, put that in, plug that in right here. And then um, your references page is alphabetized by the author's last name. The second line is indented a half an inch over, it's called the hanging indent. And then it gives you the format um, this template gives you the format for two popular kinds of sources, but not all of them. So, let's see here. And then, Okay, and then I'd like to show the screen at the end of our um, online writing workshops just to show you kind of who we are and how you can get a hold of us. Um, this is myself, I'm the student services librarian and I do speak Spanish, so you can ask me questions in English or Spanish. Um, and then uh, Jeffrey Broderick is our library director. And then our contact information is right here. Also the circulation desk phone. You can reach a student worker at any time when we are um, open for business. And they can help you with a lot of your questions too. So if you have a question and it's after business hours, you can call the circulation desk phone to get someone, um, one of our friendly student staff who can help you answer those questions. And then we do have links to the catalog, the databases and the online writing lab. So um, you can get to all of those handy tools right from the main library page. Okay, and now I'm going to start answering some questions. I know that there are quite a few there in the chat group. Let me just pause this recording here so we can.